Sorry, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, and on behalf of TI-CREF, I would like to welcome the trustees and the members of the CED, our distinguished guests, Senators uh, Wyden and Bennett, uh, and our very uh, large number of other distinguished guests and friends. Um, as you've already heard, we at TI-CREF have a long history of hosting CED-related events, some of which have proven to be quite uh, consequential. Uh, and therefore, we're also pleased to host today's event and to take part in such an important dialogue uh, around the question of health care reform. My remarks today will consider the current state of health care, putting out a few facts that I think you should all know, but this is a way of, of uh, setting uh, a, a tone and the level, if you will. And then we'll go on and discuss some of the steps that we believe organizations and individuals can take to make health care uh, more manageable. So let's start with just the basic facts of where we are today. As all of you know, health care in the U.S. was an issue of great concern long before the current crisis in financial markets took shape. Um, I think we can easily and readily agree that our health care system is far from optimal, it is burdened by both uh, inefficiency and also inequity. More can be done, more must be done to improve the standard of care, to align outcomes with spending, and to promote fairness. There are many trends and statistics that one might cite uh, as a way to give some urgency around this topic, and I'll talk about just a few that we here at TIA-CREF have been monitoring. First, I think you should all know that health care costs increases outpace growth in the economy by 2.1 percent between 1975 and 2005. That's according to the Congressional Budget Office. Insurance premiums for both employers and employees have more than doubled in the last 10 years. Co-payments and deductibles continue to rise. Recent reports have noted that more Americans are cutting back on prescriptions and visits to the doctor in order to save money. This is clearly an unfortunate recent trend that could lead to more severe medical problems and greater expenses in the long run. More must be done to educate individuals and employers about long-term costs. For example, According to a study conducted by the Employee Benefit Research Institute, the EBRI, earlier this year, a couple retiring at age 65 today will need between $200,000 and $635,000 to supplement Medicare and to cover their out-of-pocket health care expenses during retirement. Now, that's a pretty broad range, obviously, but the basic number is very large either way you look at it. That range clearly reflects different uh, appetites for risk by the individuals. There's a 50% chance that the lower figure, the $200,000 figure, will be uh, sufficient. With the higher figure, the $635,000, the couple is assured of a 90% chance that they will have enough money. Now, recognize that most Americans have not saved $635,000 for retirement, let alone for health care during retirement. And so the gap that we're talking about is very large. Now, many will tell you that health care reform uh, will take time, and I think that's certainly true. But I've also heard from the senators today that they would be reluctant to concede that this needs to take a great deal of time. We have the choice between incremental movements and bolder movements, and I'll leave it to, leave it to them to explain how that choice will work. But either way, whatever happens, we in the private sector can help to complement the range of legislative approaches and bring us closer to that goal of sustainability that we all share. Let me bring this a little closer to home to us at TIA CREF. At TIA CREF, as you may know, our mission is to help meet the financial needs of individuals and institutions in the nonprofit world with a focus on retirement. And therefore, we tend to view health care issues as part of a holistic approach to financial literacy and financial security. We believe that helping employers and employees plan for health care expenses is an integral process of the overall financial planning process. We include retiree health care planning in the advice sessions that we offer to our participants. And we're also developing new products to help plan sponsors. While there is no one-size-fits-all solution, we believe it is possible for employers and employees to adopt a more economically sustainable approach to health care. Based on our experience helping millions of individuals and thousands of institutions meeting lifetime financial needs, if you will, getting people to and through retirement, we, need to, we have developed a five-point recommendation. Let me just outline those five points. First, we believe that healthcare savings strategies should be pre-funded. 
whether an employer maintains a defined benefit or a defined contribution plan. We consider pre-funding to be essential in helping to minimize deficits and maximize long-term growth potential. Moreover, if employers and employees can share responsibility for funding, the potential for success is greater. Second, we believe that healthcare savings strategies should be tax efficient. Employers should adopt healthcare savings plans that are structured to take full advantage of the tax code so that assets can accumulate in a tax efficient manner. Full employee participation may maximize the tax advantage available to the plan. I would also like to point out here that TIA CREF supports legislation ending federal tax inequities for employer sponsored health coverage provided to domestic partners and other non-spouse, non-dependent beneficiaries. A third touch point for us at least is that healthcare savings strategy should be aligned with business objectives, a point that I hope would find general agreement in the room. The quality of healthcare benefits can affect an employer's ability to both recruit and to retain employees. A retiree healthcare solution can help the employer manage workforce trends more effectively and help employees transition into retirement. And therefore, we see this entire issue regarding health care, particularly in retirement, but leading up to retirement as an important part of the issue on productivity, uh, sustainability, and competitiveness of the U.S. economy. Fourth, we firmly believe that health care savings approaches should be integrated. Plan sponsors can simplify their administrative duties by integrating their health care savings plans with the other benefits that they offer. Additional services, such as, such as objective advice to help employees with their planning, can be added more easily in such an integrated environment that brings together retiree uh, savings plus health care savings. For employees, decisions regarding funding, investment, and distribution options are less complicated under a single approach, under a single provider. Employees can also benefit by working with plan consultants who are more familiar with their total benefit packages, so bringing again health care and retiree care issues. Fifth, Healthcare savings strategies should take a prudent and long-term view. We believe that plan sponsors can mitigate investment risks by choosing qualified asset managers and an appropriate investment menu, and by supporting a consistent, diversified approach to investing. Guided investment vehicles, such as life cycle funds, may be attractive because they provide automatic reallocation to lower risk assets for older employees nearing retirement. Features such as auto-enroll and auto-save can enhance participation, and those are features that take, care, take advantage of what the behavioral economists have told us, that it is easier to, to help people if there's an opt-out plan as opposed to an opt-in plan. Finally, we believe that many of the vehicles currently available can be even more effective if they address the fact that healthcare spending can rise sharply with age. And it turns out most people in retirement expect their expenses for living to go down, but the truth is that for about 40% of families in retirement, their expenses go up due to health care costs. The spiraling cost of health care poses a significant threat to the financial security of individuals and to the competitiveness of employers, as I described. Even as we push for legislative solutions and systemic reforms, even as we advocate for more equitable and cost-effective care, we must help individuals and employers acquire the resources that the current reality demands. Perhaps this financial crisis will in the end prove to be our rallying point, a moment where we can see with greater clarity what we must pursue in, in order to uh, sustain and develop the long-term future of America. Thank you very much. I look forward to a productive discussion. And again, we at TIA Craft are pleased to welcome you into our facility. Thank you very much.